I'll try to do the best I can, but right now, <laughs> the no, way I... things are going in this world, it's just like, it's fucked up. Well, no, nah, man, just, uh, you know, I'll, I'll bring you on and, uh, you know, just say what you got to say and uh, do what you got to do. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today, and we will leave you with a, I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. Five, four, three. Yo, <laughs> Bill O'Reilly, y'all. Give it up for Bill O'Reilly. You know what I'm saying? Woo! Gave us one of the best, uh, <laughs> best snippets that you guys can ever hear. Bill O'Reilly, what's up? What's up? Well, I am back again. Yes, sir. Uh, with another podcast interview for you guys. Thank you for joining me, and welcome back to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. I am your host, Lockout Men. That's what's up. That's what's up. And uh, today I have a special interview, podcast interview for you guys that's, uh, that's, that's watching. You know what I'm saying? So if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. Let me uh, switch it over. Oops, hold on. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, I would like to bring to the show, Trucker D. You want to stop by right quick, holler at your boy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we've been trying to get with each other for a little minute. You know, I had them scheduled about a about a week ago, but you guys knew what happened to me about a week ago. You know what I'm saying? That Friday got to the uh, delivery and uh, all hell just went to shit. So unfortunately, I couldn't get my man on, but... Uh, I'm able to get him on today. He wants to come on and uh, speak his piece about his feelings in trucking and, and the way trucking is going and everything. So I'm about to go ahead and let him have the flow. You know what I'm saying? Trucker D, what's going on, brother man? Not a whole lot. Yeah, just kick it back and relaxing. All right, all right, all right. Uh, where where you where you from, man? Where where you from? What's your background? Yeah, originally from Illinois, a little spot town. But ever since then, I've been out here on the road. Okay, okay, Illinois. All right. So where um, how long you been in the game? What, what how long you been uh, how long you been trucking? Well, about twenty five plus years. Okay, okay. What was uh, what was life like for a truck driver back then, man? No cell phones or no internet, no nothing, and and I had to go and visit the truck stops, get all the paperwork and everything else. I had to do all the foot and leg work to try to get into the trucking. So I stopped there at the old uh, Woodhall Truck Plaza. Now that's a pilot. There's exit 32 off of 74. Mm -hmm. It started gathering all the books, and I was like. 20, getting ready to turn 21, and that's where the age limit was. And back then, it really hardly any computers or any cell phones were out that time. So, so, <laughs> so back, I found that. Uh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Transport America, and uh, they helped me out. They helped me got, get my CD through Cookford Community College, and that was one of the best colleges I ever been to. It was a three week course, they paid everything. And I went with the trainer for uh, two weeks and another trainer for another two weeks. And after that, I have got tested out. And I was with the Transport American for about 10 years for them. And after about 9-11, when it hit, that's the time I quit and went and got off the road. 
so 25 years in the game, man, that's uh that's a that's an accomplishment right there. I mean, 25 years, you know, I back then, of course, you know, technology was like was like bedrock back then. I mean, you really had to learn how to read a map, uh learn how to drive a stick shift. Uh, you know, unfortunately, these new age drivers, you know, me included, you know, they got all the GPS and and the cell phones and the, and the Internet and all this other good stuff. You know, we we couldn't possibly. Well, I know I probably would, but, you know, for the newfangled driver that's that's out today, he, he probably couldn't possibly be be able to drive back then. Would you agree that the guys that's coming out now, if we was to go back that way, how many how many truckers would be out over the road if we had to go back to the way it was? It'd be a lot. Because back then, it, uh, a lot, we were all together. A lot. Wait, would it be? I'm, and, I'm, I'm talking about drivers today, not back then. I know it's I know it's a lot back then. Uh, I'm talking about new drivers today, new millennial drivers today. If we was to go back to the way it was, you know, manuals, reading uh reading the map and 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 getting out to find a payphone to find where these places is at, how many drivers today you think that couldn't handle it percentage wise? If it was to go back, oh, to go back there, mm-hmm. uh, I would say at least about forty-five percent of them probably wouldn't be able to uh, do any of that. They probably know how to go to the truck stop, use a payphone, and all that. But by reading the map and all that, eh, it depends if they had a really good trainer to teach them all that. But I would say almost forty-five. percent of them probably wouldn't be able to. I say, but you I'm, say 45? I'm just, I'm hearsay, but. You say 45? Yeah. I, I, I'll add another, me personally, I'll add another five on top of that. I'll say uh, 50%. I, I, I say 50% of the drivers today. And, and, and wait a minute, y'all. Wait a minute. This ain't no shots fired to any of the new drivers that's coming into the game today. You know, it's, no. it's just, it's just no. my opinion that I feel that it's only 50% of you would not be able to make it as a truck driver if things was to go back to the way it was 25 years ago. So shout out. Yeah, to the old-fashioned way. Yeah, shout out to uh, shout out to the old-school drivers. You know, shout out to the old-school drivers that pay the way for us to come into this game. But no shout out to you. To, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And to this day, I do not wear, uh, run a red metallic GPS. I don't run a uh, GPS on my phone. And I don't have a camera. I still do old school. That, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Definitely. Uh, definitely old school. Now, as far as, as far as some of the new drivers that's coming out here, and I, I hate to put myself in that category as well. I mean, you know, I do know how to read a map because, you know, I I, I used I, I drove for years, not just the truck, but I was a carrier. Uh, I drove box trucks. I drove, you know, I drove for different for different delivery companies and all like that. And yes, I had to read a map. Yes, I had to. I had to get the Ram and Nally Atlas. Yes, I had to get all the Atlas of the places where I was going. So yes, I do know how to read and a map. <laughs> but but as of now, oh go ahead. And the old saying goes, that's where old uh, trucker Bible uh that's what we had to trust and depend on because of the uh restricted roads, bridges, mm-hmm. the uh non hazmat and everything else. It's all there. hmm So but uh but Nowadays, it's, 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 it's the new millennial, and unfortunately, trucking had had to, you know, convert with the times. You know, they they now got GPS systems inside their trucks. They Their majority of the fleets out here is automatics now, 
And uh, and yes, I I do have a brand McNally GPS. Knock on wood, it never got me into any trouble or anything like that. And if it has, you know, I'd never turn around and never let it get me in the situation. Coming back from uh, come coming through all those years, man, twenty five years in the game, I, I, I'm sure you've seen uh, you've seen a lot and been through a lot. What's what's the um What's some of the stuff that you have seen as far as re uh, regulations and and the trucking industry as a whole? Well, over the years, I've seen a lot of regulations that's choking us all out, uh, even the good people. I mean, I'm still struggling to uh, try to get a uh, rent a house and all that and try to keep my license. And like I said, this is the two years I got left. And after that, if I can't find a place to rent, I'm done. I, I got to hang my license up and walk. So I've been suffering so bad because of the government keep coming in and uh, choking us out that we got to uh, uh, forcing us to uh, buy a home or rent, uh, this and that. They got to have uh, our first certificate to uh, show proof that uh, – residents and all that. I mean, it just, they just joking us out. Man, man, sorry to hear about that. So what's, so what's going on with you, uh, Trucker D? You, you said you wanted to come on and, and share your experience, uh, you know, within the last, uh, within the last few years of, uh, of your career in trucking. Uh, what you, what you wanted to come on and, uh, and say? I mean, I've worked with a lot of students. Uh, I know I've made mistakes going over to England. But uh, I have some really good uh, inspirations over there to help me. And also, uh, I actually found loopholes in their contract to make money over there as their lead driver. And I was knocking out pretty good. All right, this and I is, became this, a trainer. This is, and this is CR England that you was at? Okay, okay, yep. go ahead. I kind of made a mistake, but I looked at it. I tried it. Got my feet wet to become a uh, lease off. And I was doing pretty well. And even my students were doing well. And I even had one student follow the program. And I about flipped over head and over heels after I seen my settlement that second week with him. I earned almost a five thousand dollar check from this young man. CR England, right? Program. Yep. Now let me. Okay, so this, how how long you was with CR England? Because I mean, you've been in the game for twenty five years, but how long you been with CR England? About two years. All right, so two years with CR England. How many companies you you been through? In your entire career? About nine. All right. So you've been so you've been with you've been with nine throughout your entire career. Uh what made you settle for the last two years at CR England? Well, I mean something told me that I was doing real well and I I felt fit in, I was doing real real good. And that uh, next year, I'm, I would have had the truck paid off. But the thing is, I had a load up out of Texas going to Pennsylvania on a Hershey load. And my one student uh, wanted to run through Virginia uh, to be with her uh, son for Thanksgiving. So I made arrangements to get it set up. So I did, and I uh, found a little spot over there by Walmart there in Chesterfield, Virginia. And... Coming the next morning, I had sheriffs knocking all over the door, and I had about 15 sheriff's departments here. And next thing I know, we all went to jail. Wait, hold up. No whoa, 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 hold up. Hold up. Wait. You, wait. It, it, it takes a minute, but I'm here. You dropped your student off. Or your trainee, 
off in Virginia so he can be with his family on a holiday. She could, right? Yeah, she she wanted to be with her kids and all that. And uh, oh, you had a female. Parents, you had a female uh, training. Yep. Okay. So and she was actually a pretty good driver. Okay. So what happened between dropping her off with her family for Thanksgiving to 15 officers knocking on your door to take you to jail? That they said that we, uh, I broke in the uh, entry and uh, to get us on the size uh, eight uh, size uh, boot and all that. And next thing you know, that they're still harassing us, the one that's go prison and all that. Wait, what? To this day. Wait, hold up. You you broke into where? It was uh, a little uh, filling station that uh, went around. Uh, uh, I can't think of his name right now. Spencer's uh, Oil. And he had a little short truck that he didn't actually, he owned three gas stations. And we was parked, I asked for, for uh, permission to, uh, been the night overnight, then we'd be gone in the morning. Okay. And he, he said he didn't have no problem, so we did. Okay. So I, I stayed there at the truck. She went, to, she went to the house, and I said to work on the computer and everything else. And next thing you know, I went to bed. She stayed there at the house. And next thing you know, I got uh, woken up by uh, 15 uh, county cops. But wait, wait, hold, wait, Trucker D, hold up, hold up. I'm okay. I, you, you just confused me there for a second. Didn't you say you was at Walmart, or you was, or you you went to Walmart, and then you came back over to the place? They didn't have, a, they didn't have nowhere for you to park, and then yeah, you, they didn't. Go ahead. Then uh, I went over there to park there and asked for permission to camp overnight, and I was parked way out the backside, not disturb anything, and there they are knocking on my door. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. You couldn't park. What were you at Walmart to park there, and you couldn't park there, and then you park at the place where the police was knocking on the door. No, Walmart didn't. Walmart didn't have enough parking spots, so I I went over there to park. Okay, 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 okay. Now, okay. And I, and I didn't I didn't know and I didn't know the area too well, and so I asked uh, Mr. Spencer if I could park there overnight. He just didn't have a problem. He said, "Yeah." Okay. So. From there, I, I took it as, and I, we had a perfect handshake and a deal, so he allowed us to spend the night. Okay, so you and a big CR England truck parked overnight uh, with permission. You get you get a knock on, you you get a knock at the door at what time in the morning, and what was the was what was like, the reason? It was like around seven o'clock in the morning. All right, so our, that we broke in and stole twenty five hundred dollars, and uh, turned around and yeah, and they had it set up on uh, three three class X felonies. Okay, you see our England truck parked on this is private property, I take it, but you got permission from from the property owner, only to get waking up yep. at seven o'clock in the morning to to the owner saying that you got or that you stole $2,500 from him? Yep. Huh. Then they ratsacked my truck and uh, didn't even give me a, uh, okay, what they were doing. So they ransacked my truck to try to find the 2500 and uh, a couple other things, and they never did find it. And they turn around and lay the warrant on my truck again, and they come back and uh, throw my truck up, sides down, and one another. Okay, so they, they so you turn so around and so you you got off the they they got you off the truck. They got you. They got in the truck. They searched the truck up and down. Didn't find the money. So they they didn't find the money. How? How did they? How did they say that you was the one that broke into the place and robbed the place? Did they have cameras or something like that? No, 
Okay, no cameras. So they don't have they don't have no type of proof. They didn't find no money. So they had to let only you. Only off of size, uh, size eight. Only off of size eight uh, work boot. Okay. And it was set up by employee. Okay. So they they didn't find no money on you. No money. So there shouldn't have been no arrest. There shouldn't have been no charges. Right? Right, but the detective on the scene turned around and, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not uh, prejudiced or anything, but uh, she was a gutter gal and uh, she had a hatred and I don't know what her problem was. And I knew there should be no charges, and but yet she turned around and uh, told me I was under arrest. For, for what? No that What was the charge? That bre breaking and entering and uh, 20 $2,500 uh, theft. But they didn't find nothing on you. So how can they arrest you? But they did. Wow. I know the laws myself, but they did. Okay, so. So I was stuck there over Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas in uh, jail, and it ruined all that for me. And. I tried to get uh, people to bail me out. Next thing I know, I got out, and I called Sierra England to see if I had something still left. And nope, they took and compounded, cleaned the truck out, and then uh, sold all my stuff. I had uh, almost a $1,200 laptop. Uh, I had a lot of computer stuff that I work on computers and everything, and told me I was done. My contract was done. I was fired and pulled everything. Okay, wow. Okay, so to make to make was, matters uh, to make matters worse, um, you know, you being accused of a crime you did not commit, and to make matters worse, the company that you was leased on to didn't 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 show you no kind of love either. How in the hell are they able to sell your stuff, man? They're not able to do that. I mean, I understand they clean out the truck, get it ready for another person, but. They should have put your stuff up in storage. I mean, did the company know that that you got arrested and you wasn't able to get out of jail until the time that you did? Yeah, and I told them that, and then I was in jail, and I said I've been trying to find uh, a bail bond. They tried to get me out. Then uh, she turned around. I found one, but she turned around and nailed me. So. I had almost five thousand dollars left on my uh, payroll card, and she took every dime of it. And I have not even re retrieved any of that left. And the cops didn't even uh, in the county, Chesterfield County, they never uh, reissued my forty-five dollars that they took out of my wallet. Wow! I... So I sat there for almost five and a half, six months, almost the battle in the courts, and they kept pushing it, pushing it off, pushing it off, and it's like. And I told the uh, promo, promo, uh, whatever, you, free lawyer, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, told him, I said, I got to get back on the road and start getting a job. I said, I'm not trying to bail out or anything. I got to get back out there on the road and get my uh, get money going. So Western Express helped me out. They got me going, and I know that was a bad mistake, but I I had to get. Uh, something going to get get my uh, record clean. It's a, and so they helped me out. I I, I I ran for them about three and a half four months. I I don't have I don't have no issues with uh, Western Express. Western Express is like a second chance company for you guys that's that's interested that has some issues in the past and y'all can't get you know can't get right. Western Express will probably be that company that it at least give you a second chance out there so you can try to get your I had, life right. I, I had a good Yeah, I mean they were not bad. I mean if I have a chance to go back to them, I'd go back to them in a heartbeat. I was on the flatbed side and I loved it. Alright. So what what was the outcome of 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 the situation? I mean it you, 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 the charges had to be dropped, bro. I mean, it, it had to be dropped. I, well, I, mean, I stayed in contact with my lawyer, and after uh, my logs 
I think I was on it for about three and a half, four weeks. So I emailed all my uh, logs and took some pictures of, uh, the, the, like, I had a spot with Dairy Queen. And I turned around and showed it at night. Mm-hmm. When I went to bed and I got up, I took pictures of this little Dairy Queen I parked on it uh, overnight. And I took, got up did some pictures that I uh, showed that I do not break in and sent it to him. And I sent all my e-logs uh, to him directly. Okay. And all of a sudden, we heard uh, two weeks back, the case was dropped. If it wasn't for my leg work, we would still be in the situation we were in if it wasn't for my leg work. I, I don't think... I, I don't know, man. That that's crazy. It shouldn't it, it shouldn't even went that far. I mean, they didn't find nothing on the truck. But it did. It it didn't. They didn't find nothing on the truck. And you know, you shouldn't have been arrested. Cr England shouldn't have let you go. But considering uh, considering what happened, you know what I'm saying. All right, so. So now you you you're at Western Express. You you rocked out with them. Are you still with Western Express? No. Then turn around and uh, I hooked up with a carnival for uh, two and a half years and uh, was a driver for them and uh, was also an uh, operator for uh, the carnival. And I took and uh, was uh, kind of like in charge of uh, four different rides. Now working for now you say working for a carnival. This is like these carnivals that goes to state to state year round. They they post up yep. at a like they post up at abandoned malls and all like that, and they set their little carnival rides up, the Ferris wheel and all like that. So you was uh so you was yep. so how you hooked up with them? I mean because I'm assuming you had to that that was pretty much year round. I mean that's. Yeah, that that's pretty much year round. Well, there are, some of them are some of them are year round. Some of them take uh, like three or four months off, and then they start back up again. That's what this carnival did. Okay, okay. And uh, I met up with them in uh, Quad Cities, uh, uh, Mississippi River uh, Fair. There, in, uh, I think it was Davenport, Iowa. Okay, that's. I got back up in there and uh, was almost again, so that's how I hooked up with them. So what show? So man, sorry about all of that, but it sounds like you was, sounds like you getting back good. So what show? What's your life like? What's what's your life like now, bro? I mean, you should you should be back on a good foot, right? No. It's all going downhill again. I mean, I had the green doors over there at England with the lease. I, I mean, I was doing real well, and I was helping train uh, students. And after the, they crapped me on, crapped uh, on me like that, and it was like really. And they wouldn't even help me with lawyers. I mean, they wouldn't uh, help me out. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just bit me over. Uh, I hit hit the uh, highway. But we always call it highway shame. Okay, okay. So, what what are you doing now to get yourself back together? What what what's, what's what are you doing right now? Well, I'm with a uh, small company. It's got uh, four trucks, and and this old, old timer. I mean, he's a good boss. He. he, he he doesn't even like the federal side or the rec- rules and regulations. And uh, like I said, he he's a good boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. It, his dad made it, his dad built the company, and so right now that only run uh, like five states from Missouri down to New Mexico, and then turn around and come right back to Missouri, and then have two days off and do it again. Well, that sounds kind of that sounds kind of good for you right there, bro. I mean, you at least. At least you're trying to get back up on your feet, man. At least you you're trying to get back on your feet. You know. Twenty five years, man. Before we get on up out of here, twenty five year driver right here, y'all. Um, twenty five years, man. That's and I'd be 
That's and I've been beat down so much and like that, and I just shake it off. That's what's up, man. There's, you know, you gotta have you gotta have a hard chest. You know, don't and and lot and not let too many things bother you, man. That's and and keep it moving and keep it with the grace of God. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all it is. You know, that's all it is. It's all you gotta do. Um. 25 years though man how how many miles you think you accumulated uh throughout your 25 years man how how many miles you you think you did or doing for that matter i don't know quite a bit <laughs> of course i i'm i'm going to I'm probably close to two uh what 2 million you you got to be way past that bro yep. 25 years you got to be way past 2 million yeah hey, i probably i probably way past that Okay, okay. Yeah, you got to be way past two million. But I lost count of the past two million. Yeah, you way past two million, 25 years, and you still going? Well, look at this way, bro. I'm I'm going on 50 years this year, and I started at 21, so you calculate how many years I've been out here, no vacation, and then I, I live out of the truck, and that's all I do. Well, you got you, you to gotta get out of the truck and live, bro. It's not about just going to shipper oh, receiver and 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 trust stops. I mean, you gotta you gotta get out and and shake them legs, man. I I did. I changed it. I you know five you know four years. Oh, I, I do. I mean, I I walk I walk around the parking lot and uh, that and I usually uh, no I, I, no, no trucker truck, trucker D no 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 no. I'm not talking about getting out of the truck and, and walk around the park. I'm talking about getting out of the truck for a staycation. I'm talking about finding a hotel with a pool, jump in that boy, or a hotel with a sauna, jump in that boy. That's what I'm doing. I, you know, four years of trucking, no vacation, uh, no vacation, in and in and out in and out of this truck no no i i had to change it i had to change it up this year you know what i'm saying i got a staycation now that i'm on right now you know should be at the tables chilling but um but no bro i'm i'm talking about getting out guilt going to a staycation take saturday friday saturday and sunday taking it to yourself go up to, grab a hotel Chill out, grab a Uber, ride around the city, come back and do the damn thing, man. You got you got to do that. You got you got to do that, man. You, we we getting old, bro. I'm 51 years old, man. I I gotta I gotta you know like I said, that's why I'm doing it right now. You know I'm I'm, I'm separated. Me you know I've been separated from my wife for over seven years, and and yeah yeah I I, I gotta do it, man. It's just me. I, you know, staying, staying in this truck is, is cumbersome, bro. Uh, you know, but, um, but yeah, yeah. Do that for me, man. Get out, get out, get a hotel, do the damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Do the damn thing. Well, it, it, that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard to do, but I mean, I don't have no girlfriend, no kids to come back to you. And I've been solo for the it doesn't really give me time to uh, go find a girl to date or whatnot. They just said, "Well, I, I just, it, I just gave up on the dating side." Well, being the truck driver, it's kind of hard on a on a on a dating life. But trust me, you 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 will find a young lady, man. It'll it'll be one. It'll it'll uh hold on, wait, wait. It'll it'll be one. It'll be one. But definitely get out of the truck, man. Get out of the truck. Uh, twenty-five year driver right here, uh, trucker, uh, trucker D man. I I appreciate you coming on, man, and uh, and chopping it up with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, talk a little bit about your life. You know, I like that. Um, yeah, I I, I appreciate you doing that. You got any uh advice for the uh, younger jacks that's coming out here? Go ahead. What's up? So you got any advice for any of the younger Jets that's coming out here? Yeah, I, I mean, I do. I mean, 
like I said, just do the best you can. Mm -hmm. Shop around. It just like choose, see whatever uh, fits comfortable for you. I mean, there's a lot of companies out here are try, trying to give you a seat. So I mean, just go with what you can go with, and uh, get that ears in. Then it helps you uh, find a better situation. And that's what's up. That's what's up. That is one to grow on. Trucker J. Oh, wait a minute. Trucker D, hold on. Trucker D, everybody. Yes, sir. I appreciate you coming on again. If you guys want to come on and holler at your boy, you know what I'm saying? Hit me up in the Gmail. That's lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, or over at the Instagram. That's what's up. Instagram. Love Instagram. 400 strong i'm just saying uh hit me up over there in the dm let me know you want to come on and chop it up or you could just text me 216-600-2090 ah uh, man great conversation great conversation 25 years man i i just love talking to talking to veteran drivers old school drivers to see what was life like back then versus now man it's it's crazy it's crazy thank you for what hey, go ahead hey do me a favor yes sir look on uh google maps where uh google earth it's got a little uh measuring ruler that can actually judge the uh miles between uh locations and actually uh like old military i mean we used to use a straight line like a uh Chargeable cord to lay on the path, mm -hmm. kind of help give us a uh, straight line to uh, what highways we actually need to get to the uh, customer without going over mileage. You could also do that too. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of trick, tricks that we used to run, like in old school. That's what I, I was taught on. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. And it still works to this day. And again, that's another tip. That is another tip to grow on. All right, I'm going to have somebody to play me out. I don't know who it's going to be. It's going to be somebody either from iMarkeys or that guy Sway. Got somebody to play me out. Might not hear it now, but you'll hear it in the in the post. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, everybody, I thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. Uh, if you like content like this again, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe hit that bell and that all button for more i appreciate you guys that was my guy trucker trucker d on the line telling telling you guys what's up and on that note i am out of here you guys take it easy peace all right guys